hello my dear students uh, hope you are doing well as i promised i am making a video of uh, a problem based on descriptive statistics so let's start here i have taken a problem from the following data on age of employees calculate arithmetic mean median mode quartiles q1 q2 q3 standard deviation coefficient of skewness kurtosis frequency curve okay and comment on the result so this is the problem we have given where we have given cumulative frequencies like below 25 age there are 8 employees below 30 years age there are 20 so in this way we have given 100 employees okay so we have given data as of a cumulative frequency we have to convert into as a simple frequency let's Let's see how do we do that. So in the solution I have written, the data is given in cumulative frequency as I told you, distribution form. So we have to convert it into a simple frequency distribution. What we need to do? It is very easy to convert. Like as you can see, there are 8 employees, those ages below 25. Now after when we are calculating from 25 to 30, subtract 8 from 20 you will get number of employees lying between the age 25 to 30 similarly when we want to calculate from 30 to 35 we subtract 20 out of 40 so remaining are 20 similarly out of 65 subtract 40 you will get the number of employees from 35 to 40 age in this way we have calculated frequencies now here I have applied step deviation method to calculate arithmetic mean. Uh, in step deviation what we do we subtract and assume mean from the variables like mid values. So here as I told you online during online classes also that how do we calculate x we take midpoint of all the class intervals. How do we take midpoints add both the lower limit and upper limit and divide it by so in this way we can find mid value of each class interval okay we have uh, <clears throat> discussed that how do we have calculated frequencies now in step deviation this is step deviation method okay under this method what we do we calculate d x minus assume mean assume mean why we have taken 37.5 because this is the rule in step deviation that we assume a mean which is lying between the values of x. So this is the middle point 37.5. Okay then uh, we have calculated these values. Now why we have calculated f into d because in arithmetic mean first of all we have calculated arithmetic mean the formula of arithmetic mean is a plus summation f into d where a is the assumed mean which we have assumed as 37.5 as the middle point okay summation f is the total of frequencies into h is the width of the class interval each class interval has width of 5 okay so we just put the values we calculated arithmetic mean as 37.25 okay <clears throat> now come to the median how do we calculate median to find median first of all we have to find the class interval in which median is lying so for that we have the formula n by 2th term consisting of n by 2th term means 50th term n is total is 500 so 100 divided by 2 is 50th term so 50th term would lie where for that we have to calculate cumulative frequency so 50th term would be after 40 65 so here after 40 41 to 65 term would be in this cumulative frequency therefore in front of this we have class interval of 35 to 40 so this is your median class interval where you will get your median value so that's why i have written here 35 to 40 is the median class interval now in this class in this class interval we applied the formula to find median that is l plus n by 2 minus cumulative frequency divided by f 
where l is the lower limit of the class interval we have found l is 35 we have put the value then n by 2 obviously 100 by 2 50 another cumulative frequency uh, is the cumulative frequency of previous class interval of median class so median class was this so previous cumulative frequency is 40 so here we would subtract 40 from 50 and into width of the class interval okay then divided by frequency of the median class that is 25 so in this way we have calculated value of median as 37 so this is the value of median 37 now come to mode how do we find mode mode is obviously uh, the class interval which has the maximum frequency would be our mode class interval as we have given 25 is the maximum frequency which is lying in the class interval of 35 to 40 so this is your class of mode also here when we apply the formula to find mode l plus fm fm minus 1 where fm is the frequency of mode class interval m minus 1 means frequency of the previous previous to mode class interval frequency you know ye aapka 20 hai, that is 20 similarly fm plus 1 means next to mode class interval frequency that is 15 so in on the next page let's see what values we have put yeah as you can see here okay this is the continuity in finding mode so we have put the values in this formula and calculated the value of mode as 36.67 got it now come to the fourth part of this problem that is to find quartiles as uh, during our online classes also we have discussed that quartiles as what are what quartiles divide our data into four equal parts that's why there they are three in numbers q1 q2 and q3 q1 divides the data into 25 percent and 75 percent and q2 is same as the median value which divides the whole data into two equal parts 50 percent 50 percent and q3 divides the data into 75 percent and 25 percent so here the the concept of calculating first quartile second quartile third part is the same as we calculate as median okay so first of all we have to find the class interval which consisting of uh, our first quartile value so that there here we will make use of n by 4 because quartiles divide data into four equal parts so 25th term the 25th term in, in cumulative frequency if we check 25th term would lie here in 40 okay so in front of 40 we have the class interval 32 35 so that's why this is your class interval in which your first quartile q1 would lie that's why here we have taken class of 30 to 35 now again apply the formula to find q1 bilkul same as it is as we found uh, median you can see here here the difference is just n by 2 and n by 4 the difference is in the this value only okay cf means we same uh, cumulative frequency of the previous first quartile class interval joki aapka yaha par 20 hai okay so we have found the value of q1 as 31.25 so 31.25 wala jo age ka banda hoga that would divide the total data into 25 percent before this value and 75 percent of the data after this value similarly we can calculate q3 q2 would be same as median i have told you already so here q3 when you will find q3 you would uh, multiply n by 4 by 3 with 3 so this would be 75th term so 75th term would lie in cumulative frequency with 80 okay because after 65 66 67 up to 80th term would come in this cumulative frequency so in front of 80 the class interval is of 40 to 45 that's why here i have taken class interval interval for q3 as 40 to 45 now 
in the same way as we have calculated q1 we will calculate value of q3 and because we are finding here q3 that's why we would multiply and by 4 with 3 and the same way we can calculate value of q3 so 43.33 is the age of the person who would divide the total data into 75% and 25% data so before this would be 75% and after it would be 25% data okay I think it's clear to you now come to find standard deviation uh, to find standard deviation we I have already given you a formula for a group data so the same formula I have applied here and uh, to calculate f into d square that's why I have made here more columns uh, to calculate f into d square we have calculated here f into d we have calculated f into d also the summation of f into d now we just put the value and calculate sigma is equals to 8.229 got it now come to the Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness so Carl Pearson's coefficient is skewness formula is is mean minus mode upon sigma very easy to calculate we have calculated 0 0.07 and uh, as you know that the value of Carl Pearson's coefficient lie between plus 3 to minus 3 or minus 3 to plus 3 you can say so if it is positive it means uh, the frequency curve of the data would be positively skewed means tail of the curve on right side would be more longer than the left hand tail let's see uh, it would happen or not but uh, this is the formula to calculate Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness so after finding Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness come to next that that is kurtosis now the formula to find kurtosis which is denoted by beta 2 is 1 upon n sub submission f into d if we have applied step division method okay so here formula would become d to the power 4 divided by sigma standard deviation uh, to the power 4 into width of the class interval to the power 4 so I just simply calculated this f into d to the power 4 from the table as uh, I have calculated here in this table so it's a sum comes 1715 I just put the value here and calculated its value as 2.269 uh, if beta 2 is less than 3 it means it would its shape would be platycartic okay and uh, if it is greater than 3 its shape would be a little bit higher okay then I have written here curve distribution platycartic now frequency distribution curve how do we draw frequency distribution curve uh, let me brief you once here what I have done here I have taken the ages age groups and here I have taken frequency of the employees so here it is 0 point now the value values on on y axis would depend on what data you have given like here I have we have taken 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 to 25 because maximum frequency we have given as 25 okay so that's why I have taken the values at differences of 5 5 here class intervals have uh, interval of 5 that's why I have taken values at 20 25 30 35 now I have taken uh, first bar as you can see at 8 because the frequency of class interval from 20 to 25 is 8 similarly from 25 to 30 12 30 to 35 20 35 to 40 25 then after drawing all the bars I have taken middle point at the top of each bar and I try to join by drawing a free hand line by making a bell shaped curve okay so because I have not 
making use of graph papers here that's why this is not the exact shape but just to give you an idea I have drawn this frequency curve uh, according to the numerical information it should be little bit platycartic platycartic means it should when you will draw on the graph paper it would be little bit lower in height okay and uh, it was positively skewed high little bit positively skewed means its tail on the right side would be little bit longer as compared to the tail on the left okay so this is all about the descriptive statistics and uh, i think you have learned that how do we apply different formulas of descriptive statistics i will solve one more problem for you don't worry if you have not understood so thank you so much wish you all the best bye bye